Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre, a place where we take a look at different stories regarding relationships, life, friendship and all sorts of stuff. So let's get started with the first story. This one is from user throwarrayperplexed19. I received an email last week from a woman claiming we are a DNA match and she's my biological daughter. It was a long and emotionally charged letter. She said she knew she was a child of abuse, and while she had no desire to form a relationship with me, she wanted me to know that she existed and to understand the pain and anguish I had caused her and her mother and grandparents. The letter was gut-wrenching. I was shocked but also skeptical. I have been married 25 years and I have three great kids. I have never abused a woman ever. I thought this had to be a prank or a scam. I had done home DNA ancestry testing two years ago and it had not shown a child I wasn't aware of. But when I logged into my account, there she was. I did some sleuthing and figured out that her mother was a woman, Terry. I had dated for about a month during our first semester of college in the mid 80s. We broke it off mutually and remained friendly. The very last night of the second semester, we hooked up at a dorm party and went to my room and slept together. It was a casual hookup and I remember it as 100% consensual and very passionate, also unprotected. Afterwards, we went back to the party and had a great time dancing and mingling with friends. We both went home the next morning for summer break. Terry didn't come back to college the next year, which I gave very little thought to since we weren't close and hadn't bothered to communicate all summer. One of the reasons Terry and I were incompatible was religion. She was Catholic and I'm Jewish. I was not religious, but she had grown up in a strict household. My supposition is that when she discovered the pregnancy, she told her family she had been abused rather than admitting to premarital relations with a Jewish ex-boyfriend. But who knows, maybe she had other reasons. It kills me that I have a daughter in her 30s who has been fed lies about her father. I can't imagine growing up thinking I was a product of abuse. That has to be so hard psychologically. I'm in pain for a child I didn't even know existed just a few days ago, and who hates me? I have been debating what to do. I have not written back to my daughter. I badly want to tell her the truth in a way that she can believe, but how? My wife, who has been a rock the last few days, keeps telling me to give this some time and thought. My best friend says I should hire a lawyer. I don't know what to do and it's eating me up. Wow. Putting myself in OP's position makes me think, you know, yeah, forget the accusations and all that. The fact that he had a daughter he, had, that he didn't know about, who grew up without a father, and not just that, who grew up being fed lies about who her father was and built up all this hate and resentment towards him, that must be huge. Like, an emotional boulder just thrown on top of you like that. If OP's assumption about why the mother lied is true, then that does upset me. The fact that she would intentionally cause a psychological burden, an emotional burden on her daughter for the fact that she didn't have a father just to save face because of religion, it's something I really find difficult to understand. I know that there are some people who are so religious that would be capable of doing this kind of thing, but I don't get it, still don't get it. Anyways, OP gave us an update, so let's get on with that. I hired a lawyer. He recommended that I respond to my daughter's email to unequivocally deny the abuse allegation. I wrote her a short message and described how and when Terry and I met. I was careful not to attack Terry and to offer sympathy. I explained that our moment together was consensual. A week went by with no response. Two days ago, my daughter wrote me and said Terry now claims she was abused a month after she and I had slept together and that she was told by her doctors that the baby was born premature eight months later. She's basically saying she was misled by her doctors. I find that very hard to believe, but if it's true, it is awful and if it's not, I guess it gives Terry a way out without exposing her big lie, which is maybe best for everyone. Yesterday I spoke to my daughter for the first time. She was crying and so was I. So it wasn't easy to say much. Before we hung up, I told her that I loved her because she's my flesh and blood and I hoped we could get to know each other and meet my grandchild. 
She sobbed so much after that and said she's been waiting her whole life to hear those words. My wife and I told our kids about a week ago. They are teenagers and took it really well. All three are interested in meeting their new sister and niece. My wife, my beautiful, caring, best friend ever. She's been nothing but supportive. She has offered that we invite my daughter and granddaughter to visit over the Christmas holidays, even suggesting we pay the airfare and offer them our guest room. My daughter is going to call me again tonight and I'm going to propose she come, or offer to fly to her if she's more comfortable. We have a lifetime of catching up to do. Meantime, as for Terry, I feel like my daughter and I were robbed, but I really don't want to dwell on it. She hasn't reached out to me and I don't plan to either, though I am prepared to be cordial if she does, and to listen to her story and be open-minded. That's a really nice outcome. I'm really happy for the daughter to be able to have that emotional weight lifted off of her. You know, imagine growing up being fed all these horrible stories and lies about who your potential father is, to finally find out he's a good man, apparently, and that he loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. That must be fantastic. And Opie's wife sounds amazing. That's great to have a partner like that. Regarding the mom and backpedaling and how she rearranged the story makes me even less inclined to believe the whole thing. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. All right, on that note, let's move on to the next story. This one is from user throwarray70a. I, 24 male, proposed to my girlfriend, 25 female, in late 2019, after two years together. Admittedly, now that I think back on it, it wasn't the most well thought out or planned proposal. It was mostly spontaneous and came as we were lying in bed together, so I didn't even have a ring at the time. At the time, my girlfriend said that she would love to marry me, but she had been looking forward to a more elaborate proposal. I assured her that I'd sort something out. A month after shopping for the perfect ring, I set up some candles when she was coming home one day, think the Chandler Monica proposal in Friends, and asked her again. Well, my girlfriend loved the ring, thankfully, and teared up with happiness. She said she really appreciated my effort, but what she meant by elaborate was something original that she could tell our kids about one day. She mentioned the name of one of her friends, whose boyfriend, we both know, proposed by making a huge video montage of their time together and putting it on a projector. I decided to start over, and in February I planned a three-night trip away in our favorite city. This time I spared no expense and ordered all the extras, a five-star hotel, a photographer, even an opera quartet. When I asked her to marry me, my girlfriend said yes, and I thought all was well. Except when we were alone again, she gently told me that she didn't think now was the right time and she was so worried about her future, considering what's going on in the world right now, that a proposal now wouldn't be a good memory for her. Since then, I've carried the ring around with me almost everywhere. At this point, I've even tried to involve my girlfriend in some of the proposal planning, asking where, when, how she'd like us to get engaged and what would make her happy. However, all she has told me is that she doesn't know exactly what she's looking for and I'll know when the right proposal comes. From my perspective, this is hugely frustrating since in all other respects, she's assured me she wants us to begin our lives together. Last week, I thought I'd bite the bullet again and after cooking her a homemade meal, I asked her if she'd like to be my wife. She asked me if I was trying to propose and I asked her what was wrong with that. Once more, she told me that she can't wait to marry me, but it still wasn't quite the proposal she needed. Honestly, at this point I'm frustrated. I realize that my girlfriend might come off as pushy or hype maintenance in this post, but I love her very much and in a day-to-day -day life she's honestly the most understanding, chill person to be around. However, I don't understand why she's acting this way and what am I supposed to do to satisfy her with the perfect proposal at this point? I'm confused and running out of patience. I totally understand OP's frustration. Four times. He's proposed four times and they've all been rejected because it's not the one she expected it to be or it wasn't elaborate enough or it's not the right memory. In my opinion, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but what does it matter the way a man proposes 
or a woman proposes if it's the right person. I totally understand making special memories and all that, but does it have to be some sort of elaborate thing in order for it to be special? Isn't the person who is asking the question the one that makes the whole thing special? What do you think about this? What's more important? The fact that somebody's proposing and wants to commit to somebody else for the rest of their lives? Or the way they do it and how many props they use? In any case, OP left us an update, so let's get on with that. I decided to sit my girlfriend down and draw a line in the sand. I told her that after four proposals, I'm lost and confused as to what she wants, and if she has a dream proposal in mind, she had to tell me exactly what she wants so I could make this work. My girlfriend looked somewhat nervous at that, so I pushed her to communicate properly. She apologized again for not accepting my proposals earlier, but said that in 2019 she was still testing out our relationship and so when I asked her to marry me, she said try again rather than yes in the hope that I'd wait longer. From her perspective, while she had responded positively to the idea of marriage prior to this, it had still been too soon for a real engagement. I will admit that I'm not the best at reading social subtext if it's not stated directly, so I could have missed the implication when she asked for a different proposal. When I later asked her in February, she knew I was the one, but was telling the truth about being too anxious to consider marriage. She actually confessed that she's planning on proposing to me later this year, something around when we are planning to fly to my home country. She had been trying to keep it a surprise, but we've now agreed that it's better we're both on the same page when it comes to proposing. We've decided that we're both going to sit down and work together to make the proposal special for both of us. And once again, it was an issue of proper communication. OP was racking his brain to try to find the best way to propose when it wasn't about that at all. Examples like these show why it is so important that you have the confidence to be able to speak truthfully to the person you love. If there's something you can't say because you're afraid of how the other person might react, then there might be some trust issue going on, something that needs to be worked on. But that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? And well, on that note, let's move on to the third and final story. This one is from user Aita Wedding Dress Coup. So, I was supposed to get married two months ago to my ex-partner of five years. Sadly, we broke it off because he cheated on me on his bachelor party with a stripper. I had this beautiful dress that cost me around $2,000 out of my pocket. I had been very depressed since everything happened because I felt it was somehow my fault for not being sexy enough or not giving him what he wanted. So last week, I decided to take my power back and I began altering the dress. I have been sewing for 15 plus years so I know what I'm doing. I cut it a bit, changed the color to something less wedding-y and after a week of work I had a beautiful gown that I could use for more stuff. The problem comes now. I uploaded a picture of the dress to Instagram with a caption that said something along the lines of you can change the worst of memories or some crap like that. My sister hits me up and asks me if that was my old wedding dress and I told her yes. She then called me and asked me why I had done this. I asked her why it was such a big deal and she told me that I could have waited till after her wedding. I was so confused. Then she reminded me that when we were staying at the hotel where my wedding was supposed to happen, my mom and sister were there cheering me up and my sister said something along the lines of, oh well, if you're not using it, I will. We all laughed, so I thought it was a joke because it was never brought up after again. She just asked me once what material it was, so I assumed she wanted something similar. Now my sister is mad at me and my mom says she understands our point of views, but that I could have waited 5 more months till after her wedding to take my power back. I'm sorry, but I gotta side with OP on this one. First of all, if you're cheering somebody up, you don't ask for this kind of favor and expect the person that is depressed at that moment to actually remember that you were asking this. Though the sister didn't actually ask for it, she made some sort of a joke. The mom is trying to play both sides to, you know, not end up fighting with anybody and saying she understands both their points of views, but says that OP could have waited five more months till taking her power back. To me, the thing is, if you're depressed and you need to do something to get back on your feet, you do that as soon as you can, regardless of anything else. But anyways, my opinion aside, 
there's an update, so let's get on with that. I decided to try to talk it out with my sister, so I tried calling her, but she had blocked my number. I was very confused and talked to my mother. She was trying to still stay out of it and I got a little mad and said that it was not fair. That my sister was not right because she never formally asked me and how was I supposed to just guess that she wanted it? She tried to justify her but in the end also accepted that my sister was wrong. Nonetheless, she told me to just give her space and that she will just come to terms with it herself. I waited a few days till I met her in the supermarket. At first, she tried to act like she didn't see me, but I planted myself in front of her. She was just rolling her eyes saying she had places to be, and I just said, you know, I hope you notice how unfair you are treating me, and then left her alone. That night, I received a call where I was berated for being selfish for about 20 minutes by her. I asked her if she was done, and asked her if we could talk it out like adults. She came over the next night, and we had an exhausting fight screaming, crying, and after all was said and done, she actually apologized for everything. She was kind of jealous of my dress and of the wedding I almost had, and she was embarrassed that she couldn't afford everything I could and that she felt like she failed as an adult and as a mother. And honestly, I get it. Not because I think she is a failure, but because I get how it feels if your brain tells you you failed at life because you don't have things that other people have. She apologized also because she was trying to blame me for her problems and that everything was easier if she wasn't the one to blame. We talked a lot more till I told her that she didn't need a fancy dress and that we could search something basic and I could help her to decorate it with something. She agreed and we actually did get to customize a very basic gown. As we didn't have much time, it's not super fancy. Sadly, due to the outbreak, the wedding that was supposed to happen this month was cancelled. They had a courthouse wedding where she wore one of my dresses and she is celebrating in August if it's possible. That's everything. So, even if I'm not a horrible person and my sister seemed like a brat, she was dealing with some heavy feelings and I still love her. And there you go, problem finally solved, using proper communication. You guys already know my opinion on the whole thing. So it's that time where we say goodbye for now. I hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and click like. If you did click like and you still haven't subscribed, then subscribe and remember to click on that bell so you get to know when I upload a new video. Also, go over to Reddit and join the Lost Genre subreddit. There's a link in the description. On it, you can cross post any stories you'd like me to feature in one of the videos. And also, if you feel up to it, write one of your own. Okay, and having said all that, I will see you guys on the next video.